We're here with the Canada Challenge map, which is a beautiful zone to be building our park and also a time limit on being able to reach the maximum five-star appeal rating for the park. One of the really cool things about this challenge scenario is that we actually have a potential star dinosaur attraction just waiting to be picked up here over on this side of the park grounds. But before we are able to bring him over, we have to set up the basis for all of our operations here. So we need to be able to get a science center. We're still starting with absolutely nothing unlocked. So everything is going to come out of research from the Science Center. We need to get that up as soon as we can. And we're also going to need to provide power. We've got to use the backup generators, unfortunately. We're going to have to research the power stations later on, uh, obviously, out of the Science Center. So it has to have power to be operational. We'll run off of diesel for now. And then we want to get our first enclosure begun here. We're going to go for a hatchery off of this extension on the path. Make sure that we connect that up. And then we are looking at where our first exhibit is going to go. So I should probably pop out and check out the map to be able to see what we are working with. We have a large central area here with wings off on either side. That's where the Brachiosaurus is. And our arrival point is right here. So as we extend farther on, we are going to start taking a penalty to guest comfort via our transportation score. So we want to be able to keep as many things close to the arrival point as possible because this is actually going to be a pretty tight area even if we were to set up a monorail. We'll see if that ends up being necessary or if we can generate enough appeal out of cohabitation and densely populated exhibits close around the arrival point to be able to forego doing that. Now for our fences, I want to hug the edge of the map as much as possible to squeeze all the area out of this that I can. We're going to come up to here and then even cut up to this portion. Come on. Before we get too far along, we want to review what the challenge conditions are for this map. Our research tasks will cost 75% more, which is going to be extremely expensive for the high level research, and staff salary has been increased by 100%, so that is going to be a drag throughout the game on our bottom line. We have to be very intentional on the staff that we choose and how we train them, because when you train them, you have to give them a raise, which is going to be multiplied by this 100%, so the staff are going to get very expensive expensive and cutting too much into our profits is going to really keep us from being able to expand. As we look over the staff that we did get to start out with, we have Faster Synthesis with Wilkins, who is a specialist in genetics. We have an all-arounder with Cheaper Synthesis. The ones that give us cheaper options, I really enjoy. Um, all-around 222. Not a great stat line, but then again, for level one, that's, that's pretty good. And then Altruistic Salary, so here... Her salary is way less. She's doing this. Her cook, Mr. Cook, is doing this because he loves the dinos and he's going to be our lo logistics specialist. Yeah, he can train up to seven. And we don't really have someone who is too good in welfare right now. Once we get some staff training, we're probably going to get Richards. Yeah, Richards can train to be pretty high in welfare. That'll probably be the breakdown. We'll look to add somebody else later on. But again, we have to be very careful about how we set up our scientists. We do have a couple really key foundational research projects that we want to get going here. One of them is to get viewing galleries, obviously. If we have dinos in the pens, but no way for the guests to be able to see them, uh, then we're not going to have a park at all. So we're going to get these guys working on that. And then we also want to have, where is it? Guests? Yes. The core guest buildings. How is this not researched? We have the amenities. We can sell people little stuffed dinosaurs, but we have nowhere for them to pee. We have no restroom, no small hotel, and no emergency shelter. But we're actually not able to research that until we have a dino in the park. Now we want to look at who our very first dino species is going to be. These are our starting four. And I really want to target with this first dinosaur someone who is going to be able to cohabitate happily with the Brachiosaurus. The Dilophosaurus here 
Uh, excellent appeal rating, the highest appeal rating of any of these, but a carnivore pack hunter, I don't want that in with the Brachiosaurus. The Amargosaurus actually dislikes living with other sauropods, so they're out. Nastioceratops doesn't care one way or other, so they're an option. And then Struthiomimus actually does enjoy living with sauropods, so even though their appeal is tiny, their cost of bringing them in is also really low, so we're going to use them as a great budget option, our starter dinosaur. I think they are really intended to be this starter dinosaur, and then that will open up some of the initial research options for us that we're looking for as well. Our very first four eggs, two are skittish, some resilience, so overall, I'm fine with all of these traits. We're gonna take all of them, assign our scientists, and yeah, these guys are so easy to be able to bring into the park, I love it. We will start this task and get them going here in just a couple seconds. While we wait for them, we can tailor the environment to things that we know they are going to need. They're definitely going to want a source of water, which we'll put kind of here in the corner, have it running along the back of the exhibit here. Maybe do something like this, give it a little island. And what else do they actually need? I believe we're able to select them here. Yeah, ground, leaf, forest, and low security rating. There's tons of forest here, so we're going to clear out some of the forest to be able to get that ground leaf for them. Here it is, ground leaf. Expand my paintbrush a little, and we'll paint this in along this corner of the exhibit. They are ready to be released. Here we are. We can open the park. Not a moment too soon. We're already down to only two and a half million out of our starter four million. Two really key foundational pieces of research going on right now, the core guest buildings that we're getting to be able to build, bathrooms, hotels, emergency shelters, pick up that guest comfort score, and then getting ranger teams. We actually have to have dinosaurs in the park before we are able to research ranger teams to take care of them. It seems like we kind of have our priorities backwards in terms of how we are setting up to open up this park, but that's what we got to do. Response facility going up, and it's time to catch ourselves a Brachiosaurus. Come to Papa, we need a moneymaker. Our Brachiosaur is a down, time to transport him to over to the zoo. People but he will become our main attraction, life, at least for the uh, the foreseeable future. For that Brachiosaurus touches down. Oh, he's so amazing. Okay, now we want to find a great name for this guy. We're gonna go with Denali, the largest mountain, the name of the largest mountain in North America. It translates to the tall one, which I feel like is appropriate for this bad boy. He wants more tall nut trees and also more forest and more space, though he's also gonna be very slow to expand his territory, so I'm not too worried about him, but we are going to provide those nut trees as his food stores, very important. Do not want the Brachiosaurus starving. So we'll get these going, kind of intermingling with this forest, coming along the side here. Maybe a little bit on the back as well to fill in the open space, very nice. Now for some Nostoceratops to be able to give us even more dino variety, which is really important. And I'll, I'll share the breakdown on why in a second, but we want to check these guys out, assign our scientist. This is going to bring us down to effectively bankrupt. So it had better be able to bring us to the break even point and beyond. Also, I should probably go for some small amenities to begin providing for our guests. They're targeting specifically create amenity food coverage, but obviously we want all amenities covered. Urgent message, low cash balance. We can, our financial system looks bleak. Should we accept an investment from an unpopular company? We can either get our publicity rating set to 100 if we refuse the donation, or we can get $5 million, which is more than we even started with. Getting this event is definitely going to help us out. You don't always get these. These are kind of randomized. I am going to take the cash. Take the cash and run, even though it increases our unrest and is going to hit the um, publicity rating. That will balance out on its own fairly quickly as long as... Uh, no other catastrophes come along and befall us. Chaos brought us together. 
Now we get to pick our monthly contract. We can't, I mean, improving amenity coverage is exactly what we are doing right now. So I think that this is going to be pretty easy for us to accomplish. Also being able to reach the financial break even point. We are right on the cusp of being able to do that as well. So both of these are going to be good. Park appeal, probably not, because we're not really raising the appeal right now. I'm going to go for the break even, just so we have a tracker here. Okay, we are super close. That one will be very easy to get. Then let us grab the drink shop. Get the drinks. Let the drinks flow. Get that in place, and then another small amenity for the gift shop. Are we able to squeeze it in? Ah, it's too tight. It was just too tight to be able to fit in there. So we'll put it here alongside the, the burger place, and then we're going to want to configure these so we can squeeze a profit out of them. Oh, they also said we need the hotel to have an accommodation rating. That's definitely good, especially because luxury guests appreciate the hotels. And I think my experience is that the luxury guests do spend a lot at the amenities. Is donuts our best option? We're doing we're gonna do the brain dead way of optimizing these and just mouse over every option to see which one changes our profits to the most. Now to release the nasty old ceratops. These guys look amazing. They're like the Longhorns from down in Texas. Yes, yeah, those huge spikes. We do want to do a wellness check I'm on them to make sure that the environment I'm is suited to them. They want ground so leaf artist, worked in. There's tons of forest for them, tons of water, plenty of space. Dinosaurs. So it is going to be this ground leaf that's going to be most important. Let's see, how see happy are the, the uh, where are the Struthiomimus? Look closely at the horns. There's yeah, one of them. The so for them, ground leaf is it's just over on the edge of what they want. So we want to make sure... between the past wait. and the present sharpen. And along with it, our understanding. This is oh. what my science is all about. <laughs> how stupid of me. We already set up ground leaf for the Struthiomimus. The Nastiaceratops should to fit in very well here. And there, we reached the break-even point. Excellent. Understatement. Let's go ahead so and increase the size see. of the herd of the Nastiaceratops. We'd like to see a few but, uh, more in there, be able to bring in that extra people, appeal. 60 appeal for hmm. each one of these. Thanks to that windfall of cash we got early on, we are going to rush the research to be able to get our power station up so that we can switch away from filling this backup generator with diesel it costs about half a million every time we need to refill it and once you fully refill it we only have it run for about 20 26 minutes 27 minutes it's saying here so it is going to be very expensive to keep running off of the backup generator especially if we want to expand to anything else new so we really want to be able to bring in that power station we're researching that right now. We're resting the other scientist who's going to work on our next batch of Nastioceratops. Oh, the guests are complaining about a lack of space. It is a small park. It is a small park. Only one viewing gallery, but we have some pretty cool stuff to see, guys. Power station research complete. So we can get the station, and then we want to start setting up uh, the power distribution, which is always a bit of a nightmare because the backup generators offer service to a larger area than the substations. So we need to figure out how we want to set things up. We're probably going to extend more staff facilities over into this corner. I don't see uh, wanting to send the guests over there. So we're going to try and finagle this substation in a way that it will not conflict with the other buildings in the area. I guess we got that. And then we'll come back. Yeah, keep the construction going. Wait. There we go. Now for our other substations. I think we try and leapfrog a power pole right up here. And then put the substation behind the amenities if we can squeeze it in. That also covers the hotel just barely. This looks like a great spot actually. We'll take it. Hopefully we can also squeeze a path around to get in here and then we can maybe utilize this space, though that's not necessarily um, essential. We can just send a path up here and it doesn't have to connect across. Oh, path not connected for the power station. Yeah, that would be important. 
There we go. Now the power station is up and running, and we have plenty of fuel stocked away in that backup generator in case we need it. Ooh, sabotage, electric fence failure. Oh no. So if the fence is down, do I just take... Let's see, will a ranger team reboot the fence? They will. Okay, good. So we want to reboot the fence here and here. Um, hopefully, I guess it's especially the Nastioceratops don't figure out that the fence is down. It's only down along this section. I don't think that the Struthiomimus would be able to break the fence, even if they tried. There we go, we got that part back up. And he's going to go reboot this corner, but that's not even affecting anything else. Okay, we survived that sabotage. That sabotage... One of the weaker ones that I've seen, obviously, if it affected a key exhibit that had some carnivores that might have been able to escape, then that would have been really bad. Oh, yes, we got all five of the Nasioceratops eggs in our second batch. That's incredible. And they all have positive traits. What a string of good luck for us. Amazing. We've got the Expedition Center fired up, ready to go. The next piece that we are looking for is, again, we want to keep on filling in this habitat because that is going to be the most cost-effective way for us to be able to expand here at first. So we want to find somebody else who can cohabitate with everybody in here. And there is actually a fit, the Ankylosaurid. He likes living with the, um, the sauropods. Where are everybody else? Uh, the Nastioceratops like the Ankylosaurid. And the Struthiomimus, you guys are over here. How do you guys feel about Anglosaurus? Oh, they like him too. And you know what makes this even better is because if we go to the research for all the different dinosaur options and we look at the armored herbivores category, which is what the Anglosaur falls in, you get those guys for free. They are researched for free. So because the cost of research is expanded so much in this scenario, we want to use as many of these free unlock oh, options as possible. What contract do we want here? Diversity, provide for your guest, or picture it? Picture else. it, I like, because and it's really easy to fulfill, to but it can ask you to take a picture of any dinosaur you have unlocked. It doesn't care what you actually already have in the park, so it is really hit or miss on whether you're able to fulfill that contract or not. Provide for your guests. I'm not planning on building any new amenities right now. We have really high amenity coverage. Let's go for diversity because we've been talking about adding this Ankylosaurid. We're going to be looking for like Nodosaurus out here on the map. Now, I wish I could just click on the Nodosaurus and go uh, find him on the expedition map. I wish I could search here on the expedition map. Why, why can I not do any of this? I get help. This is the help for expeditions. This is it. Expedition Center handles teams. And then you dig. Yeah. Thanks for letting me know. Now I get a mouse over all of these to find Nodosaurus. Hey, we got him. He's over here in the USA and he's pretty affordable as well. So we love to be able to see that. And we will send these two and then rest Richards. How's the park's bottom line looking? Oh, we are looking pretty good. Making $73,000 a minute. Very nice. Obviously, once we need to expand to have an additional staff member and train the staff, that's going to cut significantly into that bottom line. But for right now, we are doing pretty good. Let's release all of these Nastioceratops as they come charging out. Got the full batch of five. Whoever was working on that deserves a raise, but... You didn't. Don't tell them that. They're not getting one. The diversity is incubate two Nasteoceratops at once. Oh, so I thought that diversity meant getting a new dinosaur. You just want me to add two Nasteoceratops, and they're going to pay me $150,000 to do it. Okay. We'll select the eggs, and I'm going to do exactly two. I don't know if it's two or more. Or what the goal is. We already have a large herd. We don't need to go overboard. So we'll just do what they're asking for here in the contract. Oh no, one of the Nasteoceratops is getting sick. We don't have the, uh, the hospital researched yet. All of our staff are busy. Okay, we need to make sure that we get the paleomedical facility here out of infrastructure. Here it is. Ooh, that's going to take all of the staff's combined efforts to be able to research. But we got to do it. Medical facility is up. Let's see. Uh, oh, add task. 
Let's see what uh, disease the Nasioceratops caught. We don't want to be losing them right now. Expensive investments. Ah, he got injured. Had a concussion. So concussion is not threatening to his health in terms of, like he won't die from a concussion. Storm warning as well here. Gonna open up all the shelters. We do want to take care of him. Oh, you really took a bite but that there we go. We got our diversity contract. That's excellent. So we will release these two dinos. And that diversity contract fully paid for their creation and incubation. While the storm is running, let's go ahead and take care of the Nasteoceratops. So the storms here in Canada are interesting. They are winter storms. They will knock out your ranger vehicles, so they're not able to go and do wellness checks on the animals very easily, or just in general, gonna be very slow to navigate the park. And then the animals will also catch a number of diseases such as hypothermia or frostbite and other challenges such as that. It can be pretty frustrating when after a storm, your hospital is overloaded. Especially if you have some of the dinosaur species that naturally just like fighting with each other, and then you get a bunch of injuries in general from that. So the, the storms are definitely a drag on being able to build up the park. I was looking at how we are going to expand our staff, and we found another altruistic salary, only at $9,400 a minute. This salary is tidy compared to what everybody else is asking for. I mean, look at this guy. $86,000. Obviously, he has an incredible stat line, especially for level one. At level one here, this means his ultimate stat line could be insane, but that's way too expensive for us to be able to handle. This, this we can handle. Of course, the other unfortunate thing about the storms is that they tank your appeal rating. And when we are running on such a narrow margin, it actually throws us into the red. So we lose money during the storms. It's gonna take a little while to recoup, but thankfully we still have some money here in the bank. There we go, Nasteoceratops ready to go back into his habitat, waiting for the storm to end. And let's go ahead and grab the staff training research option here. We kind of want to grab all three of these, being able to get the efficiency upgrades, very important. Being able to get these cost upgrades, they are also important, they're more expensive. And then the staff training, we'll probably want to be able to bring them at least up to staff training three. After that, we might actually see they could get too expensive to be worth it beyond three. I think it's time to be able to bring in the little Nodosaurus. What kind of modifications to the genome are possible? I don't think we've really unlocked anything, nor do we have the ability to. So we have three mods available. We could just give them a great chance to be long lived, but that will make them more expensive. They unfortunately have a chance of being antisocial, and the uh, what is this research going to take us to be able to breed that out of them or modify that out of them? Ooh, insufficient skill with the scientist team, and it's almost a million dollars to do. Probably not going to be working antisocial out of these guys. Oh no! What is this? Some disease is passing through the main exhibit. All right, we got to figure out what this is. My guess is it's common cold coming through and just spreading to everybody. What are we looking at? No, tuberculosis. Ooh, that's way worse. What is the research going to require to get a cure for tuberculosis? Thankfully, we have the staff skill to be able to pull this off. Ah, uh, but the guy who can solo the project is disgruntled. Okay, that's unfortunate. We'll get the cure and we'll rest the other two. Treatment researched very quickly, so now to queue up all the healing for the dinosaurs. You could manual it, but from top down, I feel like it's a little faster. Make sure that we get to everybody. It has spread through the entire population of dinosaurs. Highly contagious. Interesting that they can all share diseases. Now the disease is all taken care of, let us release the Nodosaurus. And this little batch of guys, they just naturally came out um, without the antisocial traits. So they will be fine if we add more of the little Ankylosaurs, which we definitely will. Oh, I love them. So, so small and friendly, everybody likes these guys. They're just really tough and able to defend themselves. 
You don't want to mess with them, but they won't mess with you if you don't mess with them. Okay. So they well, make the perfect friend. Very much like horse. Switzerland. This dinosaur we'll get another batch in the oven. And then after those release, we'll be looking at doing uh, some other major expansion. Oh, we also have research that we were trying to finish. How far did we get on that? I was able to do a little bit. We got the staff training unlocked. We got the base level of upgrades to the buildings unlocked. And we want to be able to get this unlocked. But right now, our staff have insufficient skill. They cannot muster nine logistics, which is embarrassing, honestly. I suppose we could recruit a new scientist who's better at logistics. Ooh, cheaper research. I am immediately drawn to you, and she was right in front of me. I read her first, but she seems like the best one. Do we have any other options? She's not even that expensive, really, with the stat line and this, yeah, the bonus reduces the cost of research tasks by 30%. When all of our research has been increased by 75%, then the discount is even larger. Hopefully that makes up for her increased salary. Now let's see, let's apply the efficiency upgrades we have. So we get advanced scanners on the uh, response facility. We go to the science center and we could do fossil storage or extraction capacity. They are nice, but I feel like those are more quality of life upgrades and for how expensive they are, I'm not gonna go for them. The control center is what we are wanting to research next, being able to get improved administration to reduce the scientist salaries by 10%. That's gonna be really nice. The expedition center, we definitely want to take improved yield. Increases returned fossils by up to 50% for only $75,000. Like that, that's just an automatic paste in. Out of the staff center, we can incre decrease the scientist rest time by 10%. I would rather decrease the scientist rest and training cost by 10% later on. Oh, we only got one viable egg. Okay. This guy's a sweetheart though, he's docile, will never attack anybody. We need to keep on raising our appeal rating. We need something to attract more guests to come into the park. So how about a guest attraction? Now in the late game, the appeal rating that this provides is minuscule, but here in the early game, getting an extra 100 appeal is going to be really nice. So we're gonna grab this up and the research is not too expensive, neither is building it. So this will be a nice foundation to give us a bump up in the rating numbers. We're gonna try and squeeze this guest attraction right here in the corner. I don't know if we'll be able to set up, like we could set up a tour over here. There's another couple options. It could be like staff infrastructure zone. So we want to be able to use this space for something else if possible. And then we'll swing this path. Maybe we connect the path right up here. There we are, staff attraction is set up. It can only be set as the cinema right now. And so it is desired by these types of guests and will encourage more of those guests to arrive. We're pushing right up to the two star barrier here. So we need a new attraction to get us over the edge. And I think that we are gonna lock in the Dilophosaurus as the play here he has a 99 appeal rating and you're able to run a pack of them together in a relatively small area because um generally my experience is that they don't require very much space to be happy so these guys are going to do very well i don't think that we're going to try and squeeze any more cohabitation options within here we have so many species already i think that it is pretty pretty maxed out right now oh no our first death, the Notosaurus has died? The two Notosaurus has got in a fight with each other and one of them killed the other. That's terrible. All right, we'll pick up the first dead one. There's the other guy. At least he injured him on the way out. Oh no, he didn't injure him. He just happened to catch tuberculosis. The guy with tuberculosis still killed the other one. Incredible. Thankfully, we already have the cure for tuberculosis. So we'll be able to get these guys their shots. 
We're gonna have to be careful adding in the Dilophosaurs into the park. We need to be ready to do a bunch of research and get the proper feeders in for them because they want the live prey feeder, which is the level above just the normal carnivore feeder. But if we go to research, you have to have carnivores in the park before you are even able to get the carnivore feeder researched. So we need to have a little bit of money in the bank and plan on doing a bunch of research one right after the other to make sure that these guys are well cared for. Release via the airlifts. And the Dilophosaurs, we have carnivores in the park. Carnivore feeder research is now available, so we will snatch that up so that they have at least something to eat, even though it will not provide as much of a, um, a comfort boost to them. There we go, do that. $170,000. Now we can grab the live prey feeder, $350,000 on this one. A more significant research requirements as well. But we'll get it done, anything for our new star attraction. Well, I, they're actually not going to be the star attraction. The, if we go over here, the Brachiosaur Denali is going to be the star attraction until we get something really big. But the whole pack of Dilophosaurs together is going to be a big deal for us. These guys want, it looks like, a little more forest. And they're fine with how much open space they have, so we can feel free to expand the forest without giving a hit to their, yeah. Let's see, how are they doing now? Uh, they still want a little bit more, but they haven't expanded their territory to that final corner. And the main thing that they're missing is prey. It's gonna make the biggest difference for them. So we're gonna add in the prey feeder right in the middle. How happy are they now? Oh, excellent. Excellent. 95. Yeah. These guys are doing great. The park has been happily humming along, making a bunch of money here, but still critically below two stars. And we're a little extra low right now because we just weathered a storm. But we're going to hop over the two-star barrier with building our third enclosure. And the general plan is that because this zone worked so well getting all these different herbivores to cohabitate together, we'll just do that again with different species of these herbivore types. That might not sound like the most exciting expansion, but because of how expensive research is to be able to get the higher level dino species, we really need to key off of the dinosaurs that unlock for free as you naturally progress with earning star rating. And they have some other criteria that you will just immediately get here. Release five dinos with the long lived trait. By the time we get that, we'll be able to get this awesome looking guy. He could be actually a pretty fun addition as well in the future. We'll see what we get, um, but we are targeting some of these guys who have already unlocked. Time to begin synthesis and let's see what modifications we can unlock. Also, I really want a color that will pop. Hmm. The dark, the, like the, the really black is kind of interesting, but also just bright colors are nice for contrast on this map. We'll take the black and we'll give them resiliency. They don't, I don't have any of the social upgrades unlocked right now but I should not need them to be tolerant or social. I think that those are, they already have a natural chance to be social and because they naturally like living with these other dinosaur types, we should not need them to have the uh, tolerant trait. Now to begin building their enclosure, I'm targeting this zone as the area that we can build in. We can go right up to the edge of the map and kind of keep a block in here. It will be smaller than the initial one, but because we are not trying to house an enormous Brachiosaur in there, I think that we'll do just fine. This is crazy. All these guys were just congregating right here in the water. Ha! These guys are all unfortunately going to be out of sight from the viewing platform, which is not going to make the guests very happy. At least they're in sight from the hotel. The exhibit is looking great, just waiting to be able to receive its first inhabitants. We have a little island and a water feature and then there are different food sources and I've kind of been thinning out the forest. It was even thicker before when we started. We might thin it out further because I just hate how much the dinosaurs hide from the player within the forests. I know that's supposed to be a thematic element of the game that they do that, but it is still just frustrating that you're not able to see them as you could do a, a nice pass by. We also need to make sure that we have the infrastructure in place for the guests who come over to this new portion, this addition to the park, and that they will enjoy their time here. So we're gonna get the emergency shelter up and then we also need the restroom and we'll balance out amenities after we have these in place.
Release the Oloro Titans. We'll land them in the central island here. And once those guys go, we have the second match ready to hop in as well. Hey, there they are. Landing in the middle of a snowstorm. Welcome to your new home, little guy. Dr. Let's see here. What brings you here but Do they need more sure ground fiber? That's what I'm checking. <laughs> I tried to prepare the exhibit as well as I could without seeing um, the actual dinosaur to bounce dinosaur their needs off of. Titan. As they expand their territory, they should be able to find a little bit more ground fiber here. Hopefully it will be enough. Until we resined. Yeah, they're happy. They're just a little lonely. They like having a large population. So as we get the second batch to land in here, then they should reach peak comfort levels and we'll be able to go on to the next dinosaur that we want to cohabitate with them. They like living with the sauropods, the ankylosaurids, and the stegosaurids. This Amargosaurus has been one of our starting dinosaurs. He is the smallest of the sauropods, so he fits in well with the type of dinosaurs that the other dinosaurs we're targeting like to live with. And we can bring them in pretty easily because they also mainly feed on ground fiber, which is the main food source of the Oloro Titans. So we should be able to just drop them in the exhibit without making any changes and everybody will get along just fine. They have very small batch sizes of eggs. We're going to do multiple batches of these to bring up their population to a full herd. Oh, here. Excellent. We got both. Large appetite. That's fine. There's the two-star park rating. We made it. We're not stopping. No looking back, guys. No looking back. Medium amenities. Oh, look at... Th I never even realized this. It shows you projected guests. 280... 271. Okay, so we want to be able to get them in this zone if we can. Speaking about the amenities, let's get the gift shop in here. Drinks, and finally we're going to go to the medium amenity for food. Uh, we'll configure these a little bit later once we get a better understanding of the balance of the park guest types that are passing through the zone. But we do want to connect them all to the paths. And there we are. Now we can go back to Releasing our new dinosaurs. Airdrop these two guys our into the exhibit. The and get to work on a fresh batch. Here they Thanks are. So the sauropods Here's are the actually out, huh? smaller <laughs> than these guys that they're in with. Usually the sauropods are the giants towering over everybody. But this is something like in between a stegosaurus and a sauropod. I know they're glitching right through each other, but they look really cool with these frills. They are totally happy with the balance of everything in the exhibit. And they haven't even expanded their territory to encompass much. It looks like they could be happy in a very small exhibit. That's interesting. With every addition of new dinosaurs, then our appeal rating is going up. Our target appeal is 6,000 to be able to reach the highest rating here. But until we reach 11 species, we're going to be running up against this hefty appeal penalty that is coming for having less than 11 species. And I believe that this number scales with how much general appeal you have, not necessarily how many different species you have. So basically, this does not go down gradually as you get more species. Instead, it's going to keep on going up and up as we have higher appeal ratings until we crest the 11 species threshold, and then it will all be removed at once, and we'll be able to jump forward, hopefully, at the very end to be able to hit that five stars. Ho-ho! Adding the aquarium or not jumps our revenue up to 26,000. That's what everybody wants. They all love the aquarium. And the karaoke bar. <laughs> the goal is to get these markers out of the red zones and it will fluctuate depending on the ratio of guests who are coming into the businesses but we we knocked this one out and that is a huge margin of profit for us let's make sure that all of these are maxed out ice slushies are the popular drink of choice over here fish tank also looks like it's necessary Ooh, the water feature water feature is a big deal for them in the drinks and then the TVs are those gonna be the biggest Yeah, let's put in the TVs. Everybody likes being able to watch the uh, dino cams. Now, let's get away from the cheap burgers. There has to be something better. Ah, oh, the vegan buffet. Well, I don't know if that's necessarily better, but hey, if it makes money. It looks like it's honestly about the same. We'll still take it. Switch over to the vegan buffet. 
And then the aquarium is always a popular selection. Yeah, we'll go for the aquarium here. And then we have, it looks like the play area or the photo booth. Let's take the photo booth. Kind of future-proofing things in case we get more of the adventure guests. Hmm, accidentally released instead of released via airlift. Now we have to come in and tranquilize this little guy. <laughs> he walks out into his new exhibit and then is immediately hit with the tranquilizer darts and is flown off to a different place. At least it wasn't a carnivore, right? Our next edition is the spikier cousin of the Nodosaurus, where we're going for Polycanthus here. He will enjoy living with the sauropods and also with the hadrosaurids, so he should be an excellent fit. Everybody loves living with these little armored guys. Ew, they both ended up being needy. I want them to be able to cohabitate without necessarily getting a perfect balance for themselves. All right, let's toss the eggs, see if we can modify the genome. Hey, we can! We already have it unlocked to be able to flip things, and we can bring things all the way over so they actually have a chance to be humble, which, do I want that or do I want to have them a chance at being resilient? I really like having the disease resistance because micromanaging the ambulance is my least favorite thing to do in this game. We're still going to go for having them have the chance of being humble. Pushing that trait all the way in the other direction. Now let's see what we get out of this batch of eggs. Okay, one is defensive, one's defensive, and that's it. So we don't get humble, but none of them are needy. And we actually got three eggs together instead of just two. So let us incubate these eggs, and then we'll drop them in, see if the habitat needs any balancing to be able to accommodate them. And then we'll go from there. Do we want to be able to squeeze in yet another species? Would we go for species four in here? It's becoming a pain for the rangers to be able to do checks for all of this because there's just such a high population between these two exhibits and I've assigned both of them to the same ranger team. Um, it's hard for them to get around and do the status checks. But then again, you don't need status of checks to always be up. It's okay for them to go without a status check for a little while. We got some upgrades for our hatchery. Do we want additional bays or the advanced equipment? I think we definitely want advanced equipment. Increases synthesis chance of each egg by 50%. Makes it much more reliable to get the full batches of dinosaurs. And then it is less taxing on your staff. If you want to bring population up of your dinosaurs, you get larger batches altogether. Don't have to rest the staff as often. So we will release via airlift and see the little armored ankylosaurs land and how well they like it. Oh, there he is. He's so little. Let's come around and see. Somebody got sick. Okay. Manage the vet while the new dinos drop in. Why is this unavailable? Unreachable by vehicle. The forest is too thick. A scientist is injured. We can either pay their medical bills and gain publicity rating or pay nothing and lose publicity. Well, we're actually doing pretty well for money right now. And if we check, I cannot check our publicity rating. I think it's at 100% right now, so I don't think the publicity rating matters too much. Yeah, we're just going to uh, have her pay her own medical bills. We're not running a charity over here. This you have health insurance, you can pay for it yourself. And it's covered in armor plates and spikes. Hey, here he is. Oh, he looks like some kind of insect with the carapace and the... What? Guest protest? The guests are protesting that I didn't pay her medical bills? Why would they care? Why would they care at all? Protesters are reducing guest numbers through bad PR. Well, great. Uh, and a common cold is going to sweep through the entire area. That means we're going to have probably a lot of complications to pneumonia and have to be on our toes. Ooh, a fight is broken out. Who's fighting? Oh no, these little guys are fighting between each other. <laughs> they just like headbutt each other. Because <laughs> they don't have the weighted tails like the really classic Ankylosaurus does. So I guess that's, that's what they do to fight. Let's go see. This guy probably has a concussion now. Aside from the potential cause concussion, 
he's very happy living here, so that's good. I'll make this short and direct. A new there contract. Do we want to, to increase the revenue, the increase like the number said, of guests? And then get to it. Maybe we can sneak out increasing the number of guests because there was just the PR hit and the protests lowering guest numbers. Maybe it will uh, be low and then naturally on the upswing right now. We'll see. Yeah, the common cold just sweeping through everywhere. Some of these are going to develop into pneumonia. Hopefully nobody dies, but we're well enough off right now that we can. Oh, good. It's treatable. What did he get? Just surface wounds. These guys are so heavily armored. They can't. They can barely hurt each other. All right, there we go. Medicate. Latest objective accomplished. Hey, Why there it is. It, I was right. Forward. We were naturally on the upswing, so we just immediately yourself. fulfilled the contract, basically without any effort expended. And that's the kind of play that you need to do around your contracts. I would love to add Gallimimus as another dinosaur to cohabitate, so then we'd be up to four species in that little pen. Population density really getting in there but these guys like forest there's already forest they like ground leaf there's already ground leaf for the polycanthus and they like living with the sauropods and the ankylosaurids they don't really care about being around the hadrosaurids here but we can still just bring them in first though we may want to see if we can modify their genome to be uh, more tolerant and what else we can get we have five modifications we'll make them red i like the really bright oh we can make them humble yeah, I would love to be able to make them tolerant. What does it take? Will it take too much out of my staff to be able to make them tolerant here? No, we could do it. I say we do this so that we have the tolerant trait. It'll make cohabitation easier moving forward if we can give the tolerance trait over. So we'll wait for that to research and then we will bring in the Galliomimus and hopefully also have dealt with this um, epidemic or the just general dino flu season. Thankfully, it's not jumped over to this exhibit. Diseases definitely can hop the fences if the exhibits are right next to each other, so I'm kind of just waiting for that to happen. But then again, the dinos on this side of the exhibit don't really like going over to this side. I guess there's a little notosaurus walking along the fence line, so maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. And then these dinosaurs seem we to be congregating on this treatment. corner. Oh uh, yeah, Dr. Kajal. We need immediate treatment. Who is... I don't even know why she said that, because no one's at low health. Now, for our modifications on the Gallimimus, we're going to push tolerance, and we are going to push humbleness. So this should make them very happy with both their pen mates and potentially suboptimal conditions for what they normally look for in their environment. We have one more mod. Which one is more important to be able to accentuate we could also give them just a small chance at getting resilient or long-lived i kind of like pushing humble we're gonna go for that we got all 10 eggs to survive oh my gosh uh, so some of them are skittish a number of them are humble a number of them are tolerant they should be very content with where we are going to be sending them to live their new home Meanwhile, let's help with the uh, dinosaurs who have developed complications into pneumonia. We have some low health dinos over here. Anybody else? 10 dinos out of a single batch. All right, this is gonna tie up our helicopters for quite a while. We'll drop them all around the pond here. Some places are obstructed because of all the other dinos. Man, increasing this by 10. <laughs> we have so many in here. Who's fighting? These little guys are fighting again. Knock it off, guys. You're supposed to be happy together. I guess they're not fighting with anybody else. They just keep their, their battles between each other. And somebody always gets hurt. All right. Here's the Gala Mimes Alpha. He's gonna be happier once he gets the full population to come in, looking for more ground leaf. Hopefully there is enough in here. We'll do a check-in a little bit later to see how they're doing. And this one is the Alpha, so his traits so Humble is then applied to the entire herd as long as he remains as the Alpha. Checking in on the Gallimimus now that they have extended their territory to the entire exhibit and they are perfectly happy. Thankfully, the addition of their Alpha as um, Humble, I think, is making their, their requirements on what they see in their environment go down, be, be a little bit less important. 
So they might not actually have as much ground leaf as they would really want, but their leader doesn't care. They will make do with what they've got. And as long as we don't have any of them reaching starvation levels, then we're going to count it a success. We are building up quite a nest egg and we're making a quarter of a million dollars a minute. So now it is time for us to start eyeing what we want to be able to push us over the edge to five stars. We need some really big pieces. And this star Brachiosaur, he's not going to be able to live forever. He could die on us and that would be very unfortunate. We would lose our star dinosaur. We would also lose one of our unique species counts. So we're looking for two new species to be able to hit that 11. Obviously we'll go over if we need more of the high appeal characters. And I would really like to go for either the Lagoon or the Aviary as a way that we can have a high density of some really interesting dinosaurs to spice up what we are already offering. Both of these also have a critical path of dinosaurs that unlock for free, so you don't have to pay too much for research here. The Out of the Aviary, I believe that they cohabitate fairly well out of the Lagoon you have to do a little bit of finagling to get them to cohabitate happily, but it is still definitely possible. Looking out at the beachfront property that we have here, I think a lagoon is the most important choice to make. We're targeting building it right in here. Hopefully there's enough space to keep those enormous nautical monsters happy, but we have a lot of research that we have to do to be able to establish it. So let's get to it. Thankfully we have a staff member on hand who is able to provide cheaper research. They're going to come in handy in a big way here. So there we go. Cheaper research out of you. And then we also need to be able to bump up. Oh, how many scientists are able to work on this? Uh, we have to drop cheaper research so that we have all the skills because they require the um, welfare. Yeah, welfare to be high enough to get the lagoon hatchery. Whoa, did I see that right? Our profit per minute. Yeah, it said our profit here. per minute was Another half a million. Objective. Our profit per million is a quarter million. I don't know which one is true, but uh, we're not hurting for money either way. We're going to go to try and increase guest comfort with this next contract. I don't know if we're really going to be able to do it because I think guest comfort is pretty high right now. Transportation rating is a middling and then restroom coverage, shelter coverage. Okay, so what are the actual details? If I go back, missions, guest comfort, maintain transport rating of 80%. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to do that. All right, well, we'll refresh that contract when we get a chance. The lagoon is in water, right, right. There was a whole pond here that I removed and the paintbrush for removing water seems to be the worst thing that was ever created. It never gets rid of all the water. Where the water is that we missed, it doesn't say. It doesn't appear, it's so small it's not visible. But we'll get rid of all this. There we go. All right, we have tons of space to be able to bring in an amazing lagoon feature here. Let's make sure we have enough space to provide amenities and viewing stations. Then let's run this along the side here. And let's see, so that's outside of the zone, but this will fit, and this will fit, excellent. Okay, so we have a huge lagoon. We'll be able to have some of the really big titans. Now we need the lagoon hatchery. I kind of want to put it all the way over here around the back. So we'll keep a path running around, but that will only be used by staff, so guests don't need to go there. That way we don't have to stretch our amenities and other guest services too thin. And yeah, loop this around. I would love to have an extra response facility over here as well so that they can just specifically cover the lagoon. We'll have to run power over here too. That's not a big deal. We got the crossroads here. Do the power. Nope. You can't build power pylons through the water. You can actually build the, um, the monorail pylons through the water. So I was hoping that might be the case here. Oh, I kind of hate that placement. Does that restrict my, let's see, response facility.
Now the way that the Lagoon and the Aviary hatcheries work is you take a ranger team and you have to specifically assign them to the hatchery, which is for some reason not the case for the normal hatchery. I don't know exactly why they made that choice, but that's how it goes. This guy's ready to go back home. And everybody is healthy right now, that's amazing. Let's take this ranger team and reopen this lagoon section. Now we have to do more research before we are able to have, oh, and there's a storm warning. <laughs> Great. Open all the shelters. I guess while the storm is, we're waiting for the storm to pass, it's a good time to be able to do our research. So lagoon viewing stand. It is desired by the adventure tourists, which right now we don't have a high percentage of them. So being able to get more of them, oh no, insufficient skill. We don't have enough logistics skill to be able to research. Ah, oh, how is our team looking? Yeah, I guess we're very short on logistics. Is there a new logistics specialist who can hop in? This generalist looks pretty good and is pretty cheap. This one's even better, but you pay for the one extra skill point by $7,000 a minute. I don't know if I quite want to do that. Four three three for twenty eight thousand. Four three three for twenty three thousand. Yep, you are our pick, Tanus. Welcome to the team. And she actually has training points available right now. Do I want to train her? It will bring up our cost a little bit. Yeah, let's go ahead. Hit that five on the logistics. There we go. Oh, we have enough skill now, Mr. Lagoon Viewing Stand. You will not be able to escape being added to my park. The Mosasaurus is definitely the king of the water exhibits. 2,500 appeal, that is obscene. But to begin with, we have to choose between the Plesiosaurus or the Ichiosaurus. These are both small marine animals. I mean, this one has twice the appeal, I feel like we go over here. I love that during the storm conditions, there's still 200 guests hanging out eating steak, and some are shopping for action figures, some are getting drinks. I guess maybe that makes sense. You would take cover over here in the eateries. Yep, shopping is still going gangbangers. I uh, love the way the light glints off the lagoon in winter see the white reflection of the mountains in it they nailed the the lighting and especially the the reflective water hopefully seeing the animals down in the water is not obscure to oblivion having to figure out where we want our lagoon viewing stands so we go for three of them right we go attractions do I have to click for every single one uh, yes, usually the hotkey is you hold down shift and you get to place multiple. That's not true here. You'd click every single one. These two are very close together. I guess I can slide it all the way over here. That one's not the best. That one's probably going to be the least popular of the viewing stations, but that's fine. They don't all have to be incredible. The central one is going to be the best. Then we want to upgrade some of these power pylons to, yeah, small substations. No, no, I want to upgrade this to a small substation. Yeah, there we are. Get those going. Does that actually leave this in a bubble that's unpowered? Oh, good, it doesn't. I was worried there that it was just in its little bubble where I would have to add yet another station just for it. Thankfully, I don't have to. Get this guy off to the hospital and then back to perfecting our lagoon. Let's check the status of emergency shelters. We should probably get a shelter over here next to the Dilophosaurus. Get that up with a path, and then we also want to check the bathrooms now. Guests, restrooms. Oh yeah, definitely need a bathroom over here. All right, it's being finicky. There we are, we can place it over here. I guess that's fine. Ooh, this feeder for the Dilophosaurus is infected. Get the rangers in there to clean that up. Hopefully, there's the reset. Hopefully none of them catch E. coli. Now for where we place the fish feeders. So we'll do one 
directly across from this viewing station. And then I think we want the others on the same wall as we have the viewing stations. I don't know how many we're going to need. <laughs> we'll, we'll throw in a bunch right now. Let's see. Let's check the visibility. Oh, they actually can't see all the way out there. Hopefully that the, uh, the dinosaurs kind of rotate around over here to be able to feed. Here's something interesting to test. Does a viewing platform actually count for providing a view of the lagoon? I guess, I mean, that's something that I think could be pretty fun to find out. And it will allow us to get excellent coverage of the lagoon if it works. We're going to toss that in here. I know the viewing platforms are also particularly enjoyed by the eco-tourists. They like being able to see that. So we will pop one in here and then... Uh, it's over here to be able to catch this side of the lagoon. Nice. What's our progress on uh, refining the fossils to get all that DNA that we need? We're close. Here we go. Get this guy working. I would love to fit the large hotel in with a view of the lagoon as well, but it is so huge. It's going to be really hard to work in, I guess. Oh, we could put it over here. We could fit it in right over here. And then it gets a bit of a view of these other exhibits as well across the way. Let's squeeze it in here and see how we do. We could put a small hotel in with more of a centralized view of the lagoon. I like that. Also, right now, our accommodation rating is at 100%, so we don't even need new hotels, really. Oh, no. One of the Struthiomimus died. We're probably going to start hitting a wave of deaths as the age of those early batches starts getting up there. Yeah, they're under 10. Okay, just kind of trying to take stock of our population levels of everybody right now so that as we get any deaths, we'll be able to balance things out if things get too low. Want to remember where they are at right now. Time to add our first inhabitants of the water exhibit. Let's modify the genome. See if we can fortify them here. Be able to keep them from being sickly or... They're naturally antisocial and naturally unfit. It's not a great combination. I would really like to pull the antisocial off of them so that I could keep a larger number. I was going for them because they had the higher appeal rating. But I guess the idea is that they don't naturally want to be in large groups. <laughs> Thankfully, with the wonders of modern science... We can breed that out of them. Yes, this lagoon is going to look amazing once we've got it teeming with life. Yeah. I love having this as kind of the, the backdrop of the park. You enter in and you go back to be able to see the major attractions. Antisocial taken off of them. And for the rest, I want to make them as resilient as possible. They still have a chance of being unfit, but that's fine. We only got two eggs out of the batch of six. That is a disappointment, but I guess they're fine with having a small group and we're gonna keep on working to bring their numbers up. Ooh, these guys are, they require quite the team to be able to bring around. Maybe we need to train our scientists more, but then again, that will come heavily out of our bottom line if they take a pay raise. We are already paying $200,000 in scientist wages, far and away our highest expense so I don't think our profit margin is high enough to want to train up the team. As long as we can keep soldiering on, we will. Our first water monsters are ready for release. Ooh, water is very hazy, hard to make them out. I just have this feeling that trying to select these guys is gonna be a nightmare. The lagoon is up and running. There they are. You can kind of see them up from the surface. Partly because we made them bright red. I'm glad that we did that rather than like a dull color. Then they'd be impossible to spot. If they dive down though, it's hard to see. Like, yeah, this guy's very hard to tell that he's down there. Now just to make way more of those guys in batches until we fill in to be able to get the, where is this? The Tylosaurus. A huge upgrade right here. I believe that his appeal rating is over 1,000. 
It's going to be a big catch. And he is going to be species number 11 as long as our uh, Brachiosaur hangs on. How old is Denali getting over here? We can see over here. Yep. Age is 68. And expected lifespan is 107. So we should have the Brachiosaur holding down our species count for quite a while to come. Black market dinosaur eggs. Black market dealers have offered a large sum of money for our synthesized dinosaur eggs. I can gain over a million dollars for a Struthiomimus egg. Well, yes, <laughs> absolutely yes. I paid like 15 grand to make that and they're gonna pay me over a million dollars for it. I'll take that every single day of the week. I didn't even lose the whole batch. That was for a single egg. That was for a single egg. Incredible. Well, we'll still hatch these remaining four and be happy that we have a little bit of extra lining in our pocketbooks. Let's see, so local dinosaur appeal out of the central lagoon is 476 over here. Wait, no, I clicked on the fish feeder on accident. Yeah, it does. It does provide a look into the lagoon. That is awesome. So which of the viewing stations, ooh, 1,300 appeal. That's gonna be hard to compete with. 1,800, there it is. I think that that is the, uh, the best viewing station, the most popular viewing station. Oh no, sabotage gate failure. Ooh, the Dilophosaurus gate got opened, okay, okay. Oh, thankfully we have the ranger team just right here. As soon as they drive, whoa, 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 what are you guys doing? You don't. You need to reboot this. Oh, okay. He automatically rebooted it and then he immediately sent forward. Okay. Well, next time you plan your sabotage, try and do it when the staff aren't looking. Now we have four eggs, much better. Unfit, I'm okay with them having unfit. The lower stamina recovery rate, I don't mind at all. Now to hunt down Tylosaur fossils on the world map. I just, I really wish we had a search so I didn't have to mouse over all of these. Oh, here he is, of course, in the middle of America. And we'll send out, ooh, we need a much larger team to be able to go on this expedition. Work on the Tylosaurus is coming along nicely. After this, I believe his genome will be viable, but we're gonna go ahead and crunch up all the fossils that we pulled out. This was from a single expedition. Very, very beneficial expedition for us. How many staff is it gonna take to make a Tylosaur? Well. We'll find out after we modify his genome and see, because this will actually increase the number. It looked like it was going to take a strength of 10. Ooh, we'll make them orange. I like that. I like that. We want them to not be antisocial. I want to have a couple of these. We want them to not be intolerant because they're living with other animals in this exhibit. And I want them to be resilient because I don't want them to die from disease and I'm running only one hospital right now. I don't want that hospital to be overloaded. Now we assign our scientists. Yeah, strength of 11 is required. We can manage that fairly well. Ah, oh, just imagine if this was outside of the challenge scenario. Our staff could be trained up to incredible levels and we could have way more people. We wouldn't have all these hangups on uh, waiting for staff to be ready to do jobs, all having to work together because we've kept, they ask for such a high salary, we cannot have the best trained staff available. We have two eggs, ah, both are aggressive, wonderful. I mean, I don't want these one and a half a million dollar creations fighting with each other. We'll just go for one right now and hopefully get another batch that will not be aggressive. Yep, just as I thought, selecting these guys is terrible. This guy's sick, trying to add a task here. There, I found him. So the ambulance is gonna have to go show up at the hatchery and then launch a drone to be able to investigate what has happened to my guy here. Ooh, uh, park rating update? I wonder if we wanna go up to two hospitals right now. We can afford it, we're making good money. I guess we don't have a backlog of sick dinosaurs or injured dinosaurs waiting for treatment. Though the uh, the single mobile unit is going to get stretched all over. What disease do we have? We have the common cold going through our aquatic dinos. 
Ooh, okay. Hopefully that passes through by the time that we are ready to release the Tylosaur. It takes it forever to get the Tylosaur to incubate. We still have two minutes waiting to release that guy. And this one guy still has a cold, but we're gonna release the Tylosaur. If he gets sick with a cold, develops into pneumonia and dies, I will be so mad. So mad. Oh, yes. <laughs> He's huge. Very hard to see here in the water, but if we zoom out, when you, were a kid you can still kind of see the dark shadow the over there. Here is our slingshot forward, and we have topped the required appeal. We have 7,000 out of 6,000 appeal with that addition of the Tylosaurus. We're going to be making even more Tylosaurus to bring that appeal rating up even higher. We are facing a little bit of overcrowding. I believe this is with the amenities. Some of them are maxing out with how dense we have made our park with all these dense exhibits. We don't have our guests spread out very far. So a little bit of overcrowding, hurting our transportation rating. That's really the only thing hitting us here because we have perfect restroom coverage, perfect shelter coverage, perfect accommodation rating, perfect dinosaur welfare, incident prevention, safety rating, publicity ratings. Excellent, excellent stuff. And then out of the amenities, we are working on bringing these numbers even higher. 75% is fine, but it is not right where I want it. I want it above 80. <laughs> Honestly, low 90s is really where I want it to be. So let's go to the management views and see what's happening. Unfortunately, it's just these little, these little spaces. It's hard to fit amenities in here to be able to cover these. We definitely want to get food on this zone right here. And then I suppose over here could be useful as well. Yeah, we just want to find a few more places to add in some small amenities. We have reached four stars and really what is holding us back, let's take a look at it. If we go to amenities, no, guests. The thing that's holding us back is our transportation rating is down at 64%. So we have two options available to us. We can throw awesome dinosaurs at the problem to be able to skyrocket our appeal rating to try and fix a problem even with the handicap of the lower transportation rating. Or we can design an entire monorail system to be able to improve our transportation rating. If we go for setting up the monorail system, I don't know if it's going to fit. I know their stations are enormous. I would want to have one right here, and then another stop right here, and another stop right here, and then of course this one would have to loop back around over here. There it is, it is unlocked. Let's see what we get. So no, it's not out of paths, it is out of attractions, I believe. Nope, I was wrong again, it's out of guests. The guest tab gives us the monorail setup. Oh, it's going to be so hard to squeeze in, but we could do it. We could do it. Hmm. I say we go for it. Yeah, we definitely go for it. It's going to be expensive, but it's going to be fun to set up. And the monorail provides exposure for the dinosaurs. The guests can see the dinosaurs from the monorail. It's a really cool and, I mean, it's an iconic piece of Jurassic World, at least. Let's try and squeeze it in here. We actually need to cut back and around because we need to curve it in to the next station here. Which we're going to spin and be able to position this. Uh, yeah. Right up here. Will this be able to connect? The curve is too sharp. Okay. Well, we'll take that curve out and then be looking to bring it back around. Some have said the There's the curve. That's not too sharp this time. Now we can actually build through the dino exhibits. Oh, this is going to be fun to get it across. Is gaze and wonder at all these prehistoric marvels. Let's swing out, bring the monorail through the lagoon. And now let's position our station before we get too close 
with the rest here. We want it to be... Oh, it's too far to be able to get power right now. There it could get power. It looks like it's just going to need its own substation, so we'll throw it down right here. Connect up these... My perk's been falling apart in the meantime. Dinosaurs are getting hurt. They're coming down with hypothermia. We weathered a storm and I was terrible at managing the shelters. Just becoming obsessed with building the new monorail. Let's resupply fuel to this before we uh, are unable to do our ranger duties. Urgent messenger, site manager, sick. What is this for? Higher a temper, wait. Lagoon section? What's happening? We're not working on a lagoon. We're working on the monorail. How is it able to span this without any supports? No. Oh well. Now we just need to bring the monorail back home and watch our transportation rating hopefully soar. If it doesn't, I don't know what to do for the, well, I know what to do for the fix. We're gonna throw more tylosaurs into the lagoon until they give us our five stars. Ta-da, the monorail. Can I actually ride the monorail? You can ride the tours. I just get to show view. So this is the view from this, oh yes. Here we go, we're on the monorail. We get to see the view. We're traveling above the Dilophosaurus exhibit. If you look beneath us, you can potentially see their frills standing up amongst the trees. Next stop, Lagoon Viewing. If you see a dark shadow in the water, that is a Tylosaurus. And you should be very grateful that we are not a boat down in the lagoon right now. Coming up on Lagoon Viewing Station. Stand clear of the closing doors. Now we have 100% transportation rating. Excellent stuff. Our amenities are probably what is holding us back right now. Uh, but we have some Tylosaurus to release. This guy is ready to go. And then we've got another batch of eggs ready for incubation. He is so nasty. Uh, that mouth of crooked teeth. Yeah. I wonder if he's gonna fight with the other one, because I do believe the other one was aggressive. At least the other one hasn't tried to eat the other little guys in here. Strong and aggressive, that guy's meant to be alpha. We'll leave him off. We'll just do one more here. There goes the monorail. It's actually pretty zippy. That is cool. Oh, great. Now that we added the monorail station, the guests want amenities on their way to the monorail stations. I guess that's fair enough because we turn those into hubs of transportation. The uneven terrain is really making this zone a mess. I mean, look at this. I would not want to eat here if I have to climb that slope. Essentially 100% coverage for amenities, 100% transportation, restrooms, shelters, and accommodations rating. I think the only thing holding us back right now is the overcrowding levels, but I don't really have a way to be able to deal with that. I guess we can check where it is happening. So if we go here to management views and then we have guest crowding, it's going along right here. Is that already a medium path? I think it looks like it is. Oh no, I kept I left that as a small path. This should fix some of our issues. There's still guest crowding going on. We probably want to research even larger paths. So we go to control room, research, and then that one. I believe that is in guest, yeah, guest comfort. So we can get main thoroughfare and wide luxury paths down here. Cheaper research, and there we go, ultra salary. You guys, get us the main thoroughfare to go right in front of the lagoon. Don't want our guests feeling crowded while they view the lagoon. That seems to be a sure way to lose our five-star rating. 
main thoroughfare is here. So we're going to paint the entire portion of the lagoon here as a main thoroughfare and then the, the access point this kind of central zone also going to need to be main thoroughfare we can see the visual of the guests being pretty crowded all throughout this area I'm gonna go up to the mega size don't want to have to rub shoulders with the other people that you're going to the amusement park with now do you that would be the worst there's still a little bit of crowding for the guests who want to get into these viewing platforms so we'll expand those paths and then I think our expansion of the paths is pretty much at its limit. This is the largest path that we are able to use. Okay, all the guest infrastructure has been completely optimized, full coverage for all the amenities, all the guest comforts, and now we just throw big dinos at it until that 4.7 turns into a 5.0. We've got two Tylosauruses, release the dinos, an extra 2,000 appeal coming in here and you get different animations depending on how many of the dinos are being released together. Ah, yes! The pass by his mouth is always the best thing. Release these guys right behind them. We still have a dead dino. What happened over here? Uh, the little guys are getting hunted down by the Tylosaurs. Even though they say they like cohabitating, they still just can't resist doing a little munchy munchy. Up oh, there goes another one. <laughs> oh, this is so expensive. They can't afford to feed you Tylosaurs and these dinos. Ah, 5.0! Ah, oh, six hours and 18 minutes par is considered nine hours, so we did it in about two-thirds of the time, and we unlocked the Ankylosaurid cosmetic genes for Sandbox. Well, there you guys go. Let's continue and let's do a little bit of a park tour, but we've done it. Five stars at the entry point here. You can choose to hop aboard the monorail and be able to jump to anywhere else, or you can trek past the main staff supports this kind of all of our different facility buildings packed in here and then we get up to the great original exhibit there were times where i thought about running a tour through here i probably should have never quite got around to it this exhibit ended up being pretty awesome very densely packed with all of the different dinos they seem to have congregated over on this side right now uh they like this water source i don't know why they're in here because there's just forests there's no food plants but that's what we've got and then we extended to have basically the original exhibit 2.0 with larger and more advanced versions of the same so different species of the same family of dinosaurs effectively i don't know exactly what they would call them but we have a lot of cohabitation going on in here as well ah yes the park rating we're making one million two hundred thousand dollars a minute that is pretty great considering that the challenge is was your staff cost twice as much as usual and they're already a large budget consideration so they were really eating up our bottom line not to forget the little dilophosaurs exhibit having the pack of dilophosaurs they're a hundred appeal each so having a whole pack of them is really i mean it is a meaningful contribution to the park's appeal but pretty much all of the park's appeal is coming in here with all of the different tylosaurs that we have guests love lighting up to watch them seeing if they're going to snack on the other dinos or not their bright coloration makes them stand out amongst the water and then i believe you can do a cool trick here with the lagoon you can actually lower the stand yes we can watch as we go down it's really hard to see into the water i wish that the water was not so obscuring you know they're out there, you just you can't see them. Oh, here he comes. He's coming up to the surface. Yeah. All right. We also have these viewing stations so that you can be able to see back to the far levels of the lagoon, which is much harder to do out of the smaller seating. But there it is. Our final breakdown was 13,700 appeal and our star dinosaur is the Tylosaurus. Because we know that the Tylosaurus is, where is it? 1600 appeal, and then if we go over here, we'll be able to check our population. 
and we have five of them, that means that 7,500 appeal is coming from the Tylosaur alone. They account for half of the reason why people want to come into the parks. I have to say that this challenge map kicked my butt because starting out with such a small sum in the bank was really challenging to find the critical path of dinosaurs that we needed in the initial exhibit and then it did not allow me to expand in the ways that I am used to with this park because so much of my profit was being eaten up by my staff and I normally like training my staff and developing a really large staff to be able to expand and take care of projects quickly but for this scenario we had to keep just a skeleton crew and not necessarily the best trained crew either so this was our group we had six different scientists and we were able to bring them up to training level three for all of them but then we stopped there and that was enough that we could still pool all the resources together to be able to accomplish the larger later game projects. I wonder if investing in them a little bit more would have allowed me to finish faster. I'm not sure though because we have three million in the bank now. It's not like we were making money hand over fist. Our profit per minute right now is 300,000. So if the staff expenses was increased very much, then it would cut into that pretty heavily and it would have been very challenging to be able to afford, especially the Tylosaurs. Tylosaurs are extremely expensive to be able to get into the lagoon. And then the increased cost in research as well, kind of gating off some of the higher level advancements that it's helpful to have to be able to reach those final appeal ratings for the park kind of locked us out of those because it would have become too expensive for us to be able to afford. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed seeing me play on the challenge map and let me know if there is another map or Chaos Theory mission that you would particularly like to see me tackle. There's a lot more Jurassic World Evolution 2 content that I would like to make, so subscribe if you want to make sure to see those videos when they come out. Until then, thank you guys for watching and have a good one.